This is the final video of our uh, dresser that we made for the OD grinder. We finally have mounted the block. We bored it out first, of course. We mounted it on the tailstock. We have machined already, and we showed you in the other video, the uh, two component parts that slide in and out. So we've got the whole assembly put together now, and we'll be able to take you in the back, and we're going to show you how this assembly works. And it, from what I can see, it's going to work like a charm. So let's go back and check it out. All right, we're getting ready to square the block up, so I'm just mounting the, uh, the multi-carbide cutter. I'm going to square up all six sides, as you can see. Side one, no big deal, a couple of passes. I didn't show the other side, but I already did the other one. So this is side three and four, we just finished. This is side five, and we didn't show six because we figured you knew we already did it. Now, here I'm trying to guess about where, because remember there's no print here, so I'm trying to guess about where we're gonna drill a hole. And I said, eh, it looks like about right here. This is just a piece of scrap steel that we got out of the back, and I said, ah, this ought to work. So I ran a, a pilot drill first, which is what that is. And then we're going to take a larger drill, which we're going to change here, and run a larger drill through there. The reason we do a pilot drill is it makes it a lot easier, um, because look at the size of it by comparison. So because the center is so small in the drill, we really need a pilot drill so the outside edges of the main drill do all the cutting. And then after this, we're going to ream it. I think this was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think this was 5 eighths. <laughs> Maybe, no, it's three quarter. And we're going to put in a, uh, another collet, obviously. You see Glenn in the background there. And we're reaming this. And I like to pull the chips out periodically. I think you get a straighter hole that way. So the chips that you're dragging out tend to make the first part of the hole a lot bigger. All right, so here we're putting the sliding tool in the bridge port. And we're going to come down and pick up the center line and move the part around and grip it a little differently. It's pretty easy to pick up the center. I didn't bother showing that, but I just eyeballed it because it's close enough. Remember, this is just a slot to allow the, the uh, compression of the uh, shaft. And you'll, we'll show you what we mean by that and how we're going to do it. So again, because there's no print, I just said, eh, nah, we'll drill a hole about here. Want to make sure that there's room for the cap of the cap screw where it's going to uh, have a little bit of shoulder left so it's not interfering with the outside wall. All right, as you can see here, we're putting a number seven drill in. We're going to drill that all the way through because the bottom half of this is where we're going to tap it. Next, we have to put in clearance for the screw threads, which will go to the first half. And then after that, we're going to change. We're going to put a counter bore which is what we're doing right there. And that's, we're gonna counterboy that so the cap screw has a place to go. So that's only gonna go down about roughly a quarter inch or thereabouts, maybe three six, three eighths. So we're done with that. That'll allow us to collapse it. Now we gotta tap it. So remember in one of our videos, we talked about tapping on a bridge board and there I had to tighten up a little bit. It was a little bit too loose because it was slipping. So I did it again and finally got it right. We were able to tap it and there you go. So we just want to blow that out and make sure that, it's, that it works. Drop the cap screw in there. Yep, it's threaded. So now we've got to drill a couple more holes. So we're going to center drill. I said, ah, about there. And uh, we'll move over here and about there. We'll put another one. There's where we're going to be drilling clearance holes to mount the block on the tail side. So we're going to drill those again. Those are clearance for quarter 20. Yep, we've got clearance, good. Now we're going to counterboard. So that's a pretty good shot of the counterboard there. And again, that will allow us to make sure that the cap screw doesn't protrude above the surface. And here we're chamfering it. I just came in and said, eh, it's about here, about there, well, about there too, so we'll chamfer that. And we're good. So that's pretty much it. And then again, I'm going to have to go over there and break the, uh, uh, break the corners with a file which we didn't bother showing you because you know how to do that. Here we took a piece of felt and want to put that inside there to prevent grime and grit and dirt from get, getting inside. Besides, it'll act as a, uh, a lubricant or at least a, a collector for the lubricant. So I just push that in with a paper clip and try to get it sort of lined up. And then we put a little oil on there. Now here we're going to transfer it. We held it with a magnet at the bottom as you can see. 
transfer punch. We said, okay, that's about where we want to go. And we drill a few holes here. Drill one there and one there. And then we're going to tap it. No big deal, we tap that out. So we've got our holes there. Now we can mount it. And there we go, number one and number two. Looking pretty good there. I'm happy with that. And now we're going to grind the shafts. Now this is the major shaft. Now we've already taken the taper out on this one. We're going to show you on the other part, but there's two, two of these shafts that we need to grind. I like to take a rough cut. You can see the burn marks in there from uh, straightening when it came back from heat treat. Uh, they straighten them out before, uh, before we get them, actually. So you can see it's not quite cleaned up. We clean that up. Take a couple passes. I made sure the taper was gone, which was good. Obviously, this is a lot faster than normal speed. The center that we're using is not quite long enough for the wheel to retract. So I had to improvise by stopping right there while the part is still next to the wheel, like right there. And I backed the, backed the wheel off a little bit. Took it out. Now that's kind of dangerous. I don't recommend that for just anybody. But and here we've tried it and said, yep, got a nice slip fit like that. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to grind. I don't need to grind this diameter. This is the major diameter where the diamond goes. But I figured why not? It just looks a lot better if you grind it. So it looks kind of pretty anyway. So here's the other shaft. And we're going to go ahead right now. I'm just setting it up so we have the center distance. Then I put the dog on it. And I'm going back and forth a little bit. And making sure that we get the taper off for this one. Because both of them had to go through the process of having the taper removed. And here I love having a dial indicator on it because it really helps you determine exactly how much you're moving it. Three, four times like this. And I'm comfortable we got the taper out. So we can go ahead and grind the shaft. And again, same process, breaking the scale. Going back and forth a couple of times. We're not showing all the, the, the passes that we made, but this gives you an idea of what we had to do to, to grind this, which is kind of fun. I always like doing that. I'm checking the size here, and I said, now nah, we're going to take a little more off. So we took a little bit more off, and we're good there. I checked the ID of, of the mating part and said, yeah, okay, it's about this size. So let me check that. And nah, i got to take a little bit more off yet. And again, you can see where the wheel retracted there. So let's take it out and give it a look at that. It even fits. Well, no. doggone it anyway. How'd that happen? Now I got to turn it around and grind the other side. And all I had to do was bring it into size. So we already knew what the size was, and I had to stop set on the machine. So we got a nice slip fit here. Love it. And we're going to be able to put a little lubrication on there on that belt that we put in earlier. Here is the second part that holds the diamond. We're going to snug that down a little bit. And we went and got a handle from one of our uh, magnetic lifts. Cut that baby off and put it on there so it's kind of cool. And when we use this, we're going to be resting it on the dead center. That will give us the support that we need. It will prevent any vibration right there is where we're going to do it. And again, I can move it in and out or right and left to get it exactly where I want it. Here we're going to dress the wheel. You can see where I just came in and touched it. I fed in. I want to keep a little coolant on there. Make sure that the diamond doesn't get hot and expand. Sometimes they get hot and they fall out, too. That's not a good thing. And you'll notice that the color changes right there as we run the diamond across the wheel. Just because it's gray doesn't mean that the wheel is dull. So be careful when you dress. You don't have to dress the color out. That's not what it's all about. Here we can put it in the park if we choose to. And again, we're showing how it goes in and out right and left and we're loving it because it's going to get rid of all that cranking in and out that we had to do earlier and again putting it in the park we're done so it's very very cool recommend that you take a look at the video that we made that was on uh, grinding ids ods and surface grinding and you'll find that removing there's a video called removing the taper from an od grinder which is a great video on showing you how to get the taper out without grinding the part. So remember to take a look at Facebook for us, Twitter, Instagram, and SuburbanTool.com, or SubTool.com, rather. Subscribe, if you would, please. We'd love to have you join us. Tell your friends about us. Send us your comments. Love to have them. So keep on watching.